Hello everyone. I hope you guys had a great day yesterday. Uh, you uh, get to meet a lot of uh, UX designers, right? So that's a great opportunity. So the first, so the first uh, thing that I'm going to discuss is like decoding human emotions, right? Uh, when we do talk about human emotions, right? The first things that kind of come to your mind is like how you interact with people. So yesterday you you kind of interacted with a lot of UX designers, right? So in that process, the first thing uh, you do is kind of like talk with them and kind of analyze their uh, emotional state. So that's what you do. Like based on their emotional state only, you'll kind of continue the interaction, whether if they are like not interested, you kind of change your discussion, right? So that's the first uh, thought process that kind of comes into mind and it's continuous. You, you, you would be kind of continuously analyzing their emotional state whenever you are trying to interact with someone else. So that's what uh, the emotion, like how AI would kind of solve that problem, like uh, do that. So to kind of begin with, what is emotions? Right? Emotion is nothing but how, how it's kind of like a mental reaction conscious reaction to external events like especially whatever events that you face right so based on that your reaction would be that, that's the mental reaction uh, so why uh, emotions do play as a ux designers right why it's important for us why uh, this uh, we have to focus on emotional aspect because emotions kind of drive user behavior they kind of drive engagement they are focused on uh, feedback because once you understand the emotions of the user, you tend to get more feedback of what's happening with your product, right? So these are the elements that kind of help in uh, the decision-making process, right? If you, uh, your emotional state depends on the decisions that you make. If you are happy, like if you are happy, the decisions that you make would be kind of impulsive, you would be making more purchases if you are online, and if you are in a heightened stressful situations, you won't be making those uh, purchases because you kind of have a lesser trust on the platform because that's what human uh, emotions are. So how AI decodes em uh, emotions, right? So the one way uh, right now, it's kind of like detailed aspect. So there's something called a spatial coding system. We call that a spatial coding system, just like information architecture, right? Where you kind of categorized information based on themes. So facial coding system is something similar to that where they categorize emotions based on your facial muscle movements. So each muscle movements would be categorized and those categorizations would be connected to that specific emotions that we are talking about. So in this situation, when we do talk about happiness, a sadness or something, the facial, they have assigned a specific uh, facial muscle and that specific facial muscle would kind of uh, be considered when we are trying to analyze that facial uh, uh, features, right? Uh, in this situation, take for example, uh, in the image that you see on the left, it's about Mona Lisa. And uh, the two aspect is one is like lip puller and cheek raiser. So you could see the cheeks are being raised here. So those two aspects are the action unit and action descriptions are something that describes the facial muscle movements. So that's based on that, uh, in, in situations like if you are happy, right, uh, uh, there is a situation like you get an increment and you win a, a million dollar lottery, right? That, that's the happiness scale. So based on those different uh, happiness, right, there is something called as intensity score. So intensity score would define how happy you are. So that's what intensity score uh, is based on. And that's based on these three factors, uh, facial coding system works. Uh, uh, there are like how, what kind of emotions uh, this AI kind of analyzes, like they are able to get from human beings are like sad, anger, happiness. And uh, these are like generic uh, human emotions that it can capture. They are like much more than that. But these are like most common uh, AI uh, things that it can understand. So issues with the uh, existing uh, facial emotional recognition technologies, right? One, it doesn't get an understanding of context. So the image you see here is Ronaldo kind of scoring the goal, okay? After scoring the goal, uh, the facial expression is more of 
if you consider facial coding system, it's showing as angry because it kind of comes into AU7 and AU14, which are kind of uh, jaw being dropped and eyes, eyebrows being raised, right? So that kind of considers that as an angry person. But in real world, it, it doesn't consider the context of that person. So that's what's important, like in this situation, context and culture, because cultural situations would change and the emotion of varying cultures, right? They are different. So uh, there is another situation where uh, people do tend to fake their emotions, right? So the emotions that you see here won't be the actual emotions that they are having, right? So in that situation, the facial emotional recognition technologies is of no use. So how to overcome that? How to overcome? The, what will be the future, right? The future is going to be understanding the pupil dilation. The pupil dilation is something which is connected to autonomic nervous system of our body. Like it kind of controls your bodily functions. So you, you can't fake that. It's kind of directly hardwired to your system. So it will respond whenever you are facing some sort of changes in your external events and it would connect to that specific emotions. So in this situation, uh, you see a dilated pupil, which is kind of like, uh, kind of like correlates to different situations. Uh, in this one, uh, we can assume that that person is happy and is, is in a calm state. So that is something which would kind of be an add-on feature along with the facial muscle uh, that it kind of like analyzes, right? Along with that, you have to uh, use uh, pupil dilation to kind of understand the human emotional state. And uh, you could see uh, the left one is uh, dilated and the right one is contracted. So what's happening in the contracted situation is the person is kind of in a, a calm state, whereas on the left, the person is field of vision has expanded. He's in a more stressful situation and he is aware of what's happening in the uh, field of view. So that's what's happening. But there is also some issues that kind of occur in this one, which I'll kind of explain. Uh, this is something, uh, uh, the explanation by a, a senior German scientist who explains that pupil dilation can betray human emotions. Like human, even before you know the, what your emotions are, right? This would kind of prove what emotional state you are. So that's what pupil uh, dilation would be useful in future uh, understanding of uh, facial emotion. Uh, what, uh, like as a UX designer, what it would mean uh, using these technologies, right? So the second uh, most important, uh, like how it would enhance the user experience is like assume you are using Spotify. You are not in a good mood. What you would do, you would take the action of looking at calm, or like serene music, right? So what this uh, facial emotional uh, uh, technologies would do, they understand your emotions right away. Just by looking at the camera, we have infrared cameras, right? That would analyze your emotional state and kind of recommend you uh, specific uh, musics. Uh, if you are using a Coursera app, the Coursera app would understand whether you are like engaged or like not interested in that specific courses. And the same applies for mental health where uh, mental, uh, uh, if you are uh, uh, taking some medications, uh, the mental state of that specific person would be detailed to the uh, uh, doctors. And the same applies for meta, where they kind of deliver content based on your emotional state. So uh, that's it from my side.